So I'm, I'm sorry about this kind of a barbarian title, but uh, the idea of this presentation is to focus on two uh, two technical aspects uh, regarding Eldas Mond, the, the Eldas Mond system. One more on the data simulation itself, and one uh, focusing more on the uh, spatial resolution. So before moving to starting my presentation, I would like to thank my uh, co-authors and colleagues, uh, Clément Albergen, Yongxin Zeng, Adrien Napoli, El Alina Barbu, David Ferben, Simon Munier, Catherine Murray, and Jean-Christophe Calvet. I uh, probably forget all other colleagues who were involved or are still involved in those uh, projects. So the first thing I would like to talk about is the monitor monitoring of uh, terrestrial water and vegetation cycles. So we had the earlier presentation on the mostly coupling between uh, atmosphere and land surface and data simulation within the context of NWP system. And the uh, second presentation was more about carbon cycles. Here, uh, this presentation is about uh, using land data simulation system in order to monitor uh, land surface variables, mainly uh, the soil moisture column and vegetation variables. So why do we want to do that? It's because this such monitoring is critical for many applications. It can be critical for weather prediction or climate change, but also CO2 monitoring, but also air quality monitoring, extreme events, but and also mm, agricultural practice or crop yields, these kind of things. So uh, this is the context of uh, our work here. So such monitoring can be obtained using land surface models and or observations mainly in situ measurements or satellites. But uh, here, I'll talk about uh, land data simulation systems as they overcome shortcomings either from uh, land surface models and observation by combining information from both approaches. So here is uh, LDASMON, the land, da land data simulation system developed by Meteo France's research service uh, CNRM. It operates offline, so no coupling with atmosphere, and can be run at various scales from France at eight kilometer resolution to continental and even global scale at quarter degree resolution. It was published in the paper from Albert Geletal uh, last year. So Eldas Mond involves, first of all, a land surface model. Here, the East by land surface model, which uses uh, soil uh, this uh, soil with 14 layers of soil spanning 12 meter. It also includes a snow, uh, a snow scheme with 12 layers, and in, it also includes a, um, a an interactive vegetation in order to simulate variables such as biomass or leaf area index. This is balanced surface model can be coupled with a river routing system here, C trip, in order to uh, provide simulations of uh, river discharges. And finally, it includes uh, data simulation routines and at that point is available through the open source suffix platform. So, so since the, this, uh, this um, workshop is on data simulation, I would provide more information on data simulation. Uh, what we tend to observe in Eldas Mond are surface soil moisture and leaf area index and what we want to estimate is the soil moisture in the first meter of soil and the leaf area index. And we use data different data simulation schemes. We use routinely the simplified extended Kalman filter. And in recent years, we've also developed an ensemble square root filter in this context. So the first part of my presentation will be dedicating on the assimilation aspects. Uh, as I said, the simplified extended Kalman filter is routinely used in LDAS mode. Uh, the main limitation of such, such approach is that it needs n plus one model runs with n number of control variables for each assimilation step. Uh, contrary to uh, the system developed at uh, ECMWF, in order to compute the Jacobian matrices in the simplified extended Kalman filter, we have to, uh, to run a better model run. And uh, the more we have of control variables, the more better run we need to perform. And at some point, it tends to be too expensive. 
So that's why we wanted to move towards another assimilation approach, which is the ensemble uh, Gelman filter. Here we use an ensemble square root filter to overcome this issue. It was first implemented in 2015 for soil moisture assimilation and then extended to the joint assimilation of surface soil moisture and LAI uh, last year. So in Atlas Mount, we neglect in the analysis step any spatial covariance, meaning that the data simulation system only correct one point per one point and we do, we, there is no interaction between grid points. And also we neglect covariances between plant functional types, meaning that for one particular grid point, you have uh, various uh, plant functional types. You can have, uh, let's say deciduous forest or see uh, 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 crops and you have control variables defined for each PFT and you need to update them using data simulation for each PFT in, for each grid. So for the ensemble square root filter, we use a model error slash additive inflation in order to avoid the ensemble spread to shrink too much. This is the, the issue using uh, um, models that are not chaotic they tend to, shr to shrink even more faster than a chaotic system and you need to, to have something in the, to come to balance this, uh, this shrinkage. So here we use a model error based on uh, a Rush Rolf Reichler methodology uh, using time correlated additive model error using a first order auto regressive model. We use a one day time correlation for the soil moisture for the second and third layer. So between one and four centimeter and four and 10 centimeters. And we also use a one day time correlation for LAI that may be strange using such a short uh, uh, time correlation for LAI. I will explain why later it's part of the technical challenge I'd like to show. Uh, for the other layers of soil, we use a time correlation of three days. So in the next slides, I will show a comparison of uh, results be obtained either with the SCKF or the ensemble square root filter and see uh, the difference of impacts we can obtain uh, between those two methods on the land surface variables. So we assimilate in, the, in this experiment uh, uh, soil water index that is the rescaled in order to produce uh, surface soil moisture. And we also assimilate leaf area index over the Euro-Mediterranean basin over uh, the period 2008-2017 at quarter degree resolution. And also, uh, the, uh, obviously, the, the land surface model is coupled with the uh, river routing system C-TRIP. So first of all, I would like to show you some results on the LAI. So on the top left, you have the average observed LAI uh, between 2008 and 2017. On the top right, you have the RMSD from the model, meaning that we do not do data simulation. This is the kind of uh, the root mean square difference we obtain when we don't do a data simulation. So when we assimilate those LAI data, it should produce estimates closer to observation than before. So on the bottom left, you have results with the SCKF. So in blue, it means that we are closer to observations than before. So you can see that over Scandinavia, there is a large area where we don't see much of an impact. Basically, it doesn't change much thing in this area that is dominated by coniferous uh, forests. Now, if we look at the, on the bottom right, this is the results obtained by the ensemble square root filter. We tend to get closer to observation uh, more than uh, with the SCKF, especially in, uh, uh, let's say, Estonia and mid kind of not mid Russia, but uh, just, um, just below this, uh, the, the previous uh, geographic field showed you, you have a large impact on the forest. But if you look at Scandinavia, you can see a slight degradation, meaning that in fact, the assimilation of uh, LAI, we obtain estimates that are further from the observation than uh, uh, without a data assimilation. And uh, I will 
explain it's due to this time uh, correlation uh, of uh, the for for the model error uh, if we take a too long time correlation for lai it, the system tend to completely collapse over coniferous trees in winter, meaning that even in summer, we can't regain a, a, a satisfying spread. So that's why we're using a, a one day uh, time correlation for LAI, but even though for, for LAI, that is just not enough for coniferous trees. So this is one of the technical aspects I wanted to show. Uh, another one is the influence of land data simulation on simulating reverted charges. Uh, the assimilation using the SCKF doesn't make much of an impact on simulated uh, river discharge, but the ensemble square root filter does, meaning that you, see, you can see those uh, blue circles. It shows that the ensemble square root filter, by correcting uh, the, um, the land surface variables, uh, it implies to uh, simulated uh, improve the simulated uh, reverse discharge that are closer to observation than before, and uh, that was an issue we had with the simplified extended Kalman filter and the ensemble square root filter tend to fix that. It has an impact on the reverse discharge compared to before. So, regarding uh, challenges with the ensemble square root filter, it has mostly an adequate behavior. So currently we are in the same context of no horizontal spatial correlation and no covariances between PFTs, and this is something we would like to explore. Also, uh, I, me I mentioned uh, the, the model AI, uh, the issue we had over Scandinavia, uh, is because uh, the model AI in this must be above one meter square per meter square for coniferous trees. And uh, due to the bounded variable, it causes uh, the data simulation uh, causes an issue, and we have a shrinkage of the ensemble spread and a filter divergence, basically. So, in terms of prospects, what we would like to do is to replace our mod model error and, in fact, use an atmospheric ensemble to generate physical covariances between control variables. When I say atmospheric ensembles, I mean uh, I mean an ensemble of atmospheric forecasts. Uh, or such as the ensemble uh, provided in era five, for example. And that would allow us for accounting covariance between the plant functional types and special covariances. But the thing is, if you have a small ensemble, how to avoid spurious covariances between PFTs and how to solve that issue. And also uh, accounting for special covariances implies in our, in our context for suffix improving the assimilation code parallelization. Finally, it's likely that uh, using an atmospheric ensemble, if you just use atmospheric forecast ensembles, uh, it's likely that the variance will be underestimated for control variables as uncertainty of atmospheric input is only one part of uncertainties in land surface models. So I will quickly move forward to the monitoring at higher resolution. Uh, here, the idea is to use the, the regular configuration of uh, LDASMON using the SEKF, but instead of working at quarter degree resolution or several kilometer resolution, is to go higher and higher. And uh, the idea is to go at 2.5 kilometer resolution using Meteo France uh, small scale numerical weather prediction system AROM in order to force the land surface model and to produce uh, an analysis of land surface variables at 2.5 kilometers spatial resolution. Uh, two minutes, Bertrand, two minutes. Left. Okay, so uh, in terms of, uh, for this experiment, we only assimilate LAI. This is the domain centered in France. And I wanted to show this uh, figure on monitoring LAI. As you can see, the difference of the the, the second decade of August between 2019 and 2020, uh, it was very dry and hot summer and the LAI was far lower uh, in 2020 than in 2019. For most part of France, LAI was at its lowest for this 10 days period compared to previous years. And it had the bad consequences, for example, in terms of for the yields or agricultural, agricultural practices. 
So why do we want to go to higher resolution? Uh, we want to go to higher resolution because of these uh, uh, aggregator practices or uh, also monitoring uh, the, the water cycle. But also what we want to do is to see the effect, uh, to include anthropogenic effects. The thing is the East Balance surface model doesn't include such effects such as irrigation, cultural rotation or mowing, but assimilating LAI tend to compensate such model errors as in the Ebro Valley. And you sh I show you analysis in front of the LAI of uh, July, 2017. And I zoomed until a roughly 300 meter and we obtain a positive increment, meaning that we, uh, we, we, we raise the LAI due to that uh, simulation. And those positive increments matches perfectly a map of irrigated crops uh, we had just below. So uh, simulating LAI is a good thing to counterbalance uh, missing uh, anthropogenic effects in all land surface models. So finally, the challenges with the uh, LDAS force by Arum. So the thing I would like to mention is that we operate at 2.5 kilometers. This is very uh, expensive in terms of, uh, of uh, computational time. And uh, the thing is, we would like to use an ensemble and uh, that would mean far more costly. And also the thing is, if you use an atmospheric ensemble, they tend to, to, to burn at a lower spatial resolution than the deterministic forecast. So would we gain something from using an ensemble what, while running at a lower spatial resolution because of this technical constraint? This is a question I would like to, to raise. Uh, finally, this is a list of operational prospects with investment because we're doing all these developments uh, we do all these development, not only for research, but also for operational purposes. Uh, we are involved in the CO2 uh, uh, project uh, prototype uh, in order to monitor the anthropogenic CO2 emissions. And also, uh, there are also a, a, a list of operation prospects, but I fear, I'm, so I will stop. <laughs>